Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Here with, I, I I was gonna do a big video log recap of Grand Prix Vegas, but, and I'll do that tomorrow. I am feeling, again, a little bit under the weather, but I thought I better address this before the passion, I guess, leaves. And I, I'm, I'm pretty passionate right now, but something I've, I've, I've recently read, I guess I've just been away from the internet and uh, Reddit, for example, for too long, and the front page of Reddit is just exploding. Uh, on the Magic TCG page, with the quote unquote uh, Goyf Gate. Well, first of all, I can't stand why we have to put Gate after everything, uh, but it, they're calling it Goyf Gate. It's Pascal Mater, a guy in the top eight. He's got a really cool personality, really flavorful guy. Um, he's in the top eight of GP Vegas and Lonely Pulled Pack Two, Pick One, or I think it was even Pick Two. I can't even remember. Is a foil Goyf, and he picks it over a card that would have gone in his deck. And what I want to talk about here, there's a good video by Nathan. I'm going to link it in the description. And Nathan goes over a lot of what transpired. And I'm not going to go over too much about the details. What I'm going to go over is just my opinions on how I, as a YouTube personality, as a growing, growing community in YouTube, and we're actually starting to matter, and I'll tell you why in a minute, how I feel about the current pro atmosphere. And I'm going to say it so snooty like that because that's how I feel about these guys. First of all, in some of my videos, I already talked about how I sat down by a very popular writer and I didn't know who he was. Oh my God. I didn't know who this writer was for some website. And I just thought I recognized him from somewhere. And it definitely wasn't, I didn't recognize him from his writing. I had probably sat down and maybe even played him in the past and didn't even know who he was. But um, yeah, and he gave me the cold shoulder and basically how dare I not know who he was. But I guess the biggest tweet that bugged me out of everyone was not like Josh Utter Layton, was not um, Owen Turtonwell. We've all, we've all expect Owen to have a terrible attitude. He's had a terrible attitude so many times in the past. Um, is Reed Duke. Reed Duke's comment bugged me the most. And he called him a sellout. And it just this just shows you the attitude of the MTG Pro world. The 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 the, the holier than thou. Oh, it just it just disgusts me. It's to the point that I don't even care about being a pro. I don't. I, I first of all, I don't think I'm at that level, nor do I think I'll ever become that level. Uh, competitive gaming has always meant a ton to me. I mean, when I was little, I guess little, when I was 18, actually, 17, 15, 16, 17, 18, my dream was to be a professional StarCraft player. Uh, I guess my biggest claim to fame is I played a guy named Yellow, who used to be a pretty big um, Korean. Starcraft player that was about I got murdered by yell I mean he he really oh, oh my whole claim to fame is he called me a dirty foreigner um after when we played I mean I yellow is notorious for insulting his opponents and I remember I got queued up with him and somehow in a tournament and he called me a dirty foreigner so that was my claim to fame there but I also back then I had cashed in some some Starcraft tournaments back in the day and I was on a if you notice my Username in MTGO is still VCR Avalanche. VCR standed for very crappy rookies, and we were actually pretty decent back in the day. I got on the, the very last end of VCR before it kind of uh, StarCraft One kind of died, and Warcraft um, Three was it was just coming out, and a lot of us didn't. We hated Warcraft Three, so we didn't make the switch, and then StarCraft kind of it just went its way. But um, anywho, VCR was a, a pretty decent. Uh, team and we actually played against like Liquid at one point. There were some. There's a few of these these teams that have then gone on to become uh, professional teams in the gaming world. But so so I'm I'm not gonna I'm gonna say that I have passed in competitive gaming, and those used to be goals of mine. So when I when I talk about how that the MTG professional circuit has really just final straw with me, rubbed me the wrong way. It's pretty serious because I've. I've had dreams of becoming a professional gamer in the past. So, anywho, come on, Reed. Come on. Sell out for taking a foil time away. I loved in the exact. Go on to YouTube. Maybe I'll link this. Uh, GGS Live has it where they stream the actual um, Pascal Maynard picking it. And they actually were uh, Ruben, or who's the guy? It's uh, Marshall Sackcliffe and other dude. His name's Randy. 
Randy Bueller. There we go. Randy Bueller, they were actually like, would you take it here? They actually posed the questions and they, they thought it was a perfectly fine pick to take the goif. I mean, they, they even said that makes a great souvenir for your GP Vegas. I wish all the pros would take that to heart and actually look at that. That's a great souvenir. Like in my, my uh, sport in hockey, like uh, my favorite sport, a lot of times you score your first goal, that first puck you give to that player that scored the first goal and that becomes an a, amazing memorabilia. And I, I mean, I guess it doesn't compare because it's not like it, it hurt their chance of winning like supposedly this Tarmogoyf did. Um, I guess in one of the games that the, the burst lightning that he did not pick ended up killing him. But, um, so the comments, just have respect for the game. You're a sellout, all that kind of stuff. You gotta be kidding me. It's, there's more to magic. Even if you're in the top eight, there's more to it than, than the best play or it just, it just exposes this finally just puts the nail on the coffin and exposes just this, the snobbiness of of the competitive circuit in Magic the Gathering, this elitist mentality of, of the right way to do something, the right way to play, the right... It goes back to why I even created Rogue Deck Builder as kind of a counter um, culture to the spike uh, mentality in Magic the Gathering. Now, it's gone a lot better. And you can actually say that spikes get a lot of hate. Um, I've heard people get yelled at or talk down to because they net deck and and but that hasn't been my experience my experience is i've i've 100 been on the other receiving end when i used to play my own original decks i'd always especially on mtgo people would get so ticked off when i would queue up with a rogue deck and i even had like i've explained multiple times in the past at my first gp salt lake i had my opponent actually slam in his chair and get pretty aggressive with me about how dare I bring my crap deck to this tournament and beat him out when I'm just going to now lose every last one of my games and how I just, you know, I'm never going to win another match and I've just knocked him out, blah, 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 elitist mentality where, where there's only one right way to play Magic the Gathering at a tournament. Reed Duke, I'm done. You've you've lost my support, whatever that means. I'm not gonna even say that I'm a big deal thing. But let me just tell you about the story that was so awesome to see transpire at GP Vegas. Now I've been going to GPs now for over three years. Um, I, I've been in the competitive Magic circuit for a while. I've made it on a pro tour, so I, I can say that I'm not an expert at this. But at least I'm not like a total noob talking about things I don't know. So anywho. Um, usually at Grand Prix, there is quite a bit of fuss when a pro walks by. I did go talk to LSV. That was one of the people I did when I saw him like, Oh, I'm going to go talk to him because I wanted to give him, um, a handshake that I was the guy he played for the quote unquote greatest magic. The gathering game ever played is what some people call it, where he triple splinter twins. Didn't he triple or quad splinter? Anyway, I was playing soul scissors. He was playing living twin. And was able to put a bunch of Splinter Twins on um, some creatures just for a lot of value and win that way even without the combo, which was was pretty cool. And so I went up to LSV and I'm like, hey, I just want to let you know I'm that dude that you triple Splinter Twinned. And he's like, oh, that was a great game. And he's like, give me a high five for it. And I gave him a high five and that was that. And so usually, you know, there's I'm sure LSV had talked to a gazillion people that day and he was very classy about everything. And 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 and, and so there is a lot of fuss. Like I said, about when you, when people see a pro player, Kibler usually has a huge fan group. Um, Finkel usually has a huge fan group. A lot of the like Brad Nielsen's usually have a lot of huge fan group. But there is one person that I have that trumps all of them that I have never seen, and this is exciting for me because again, it's not an elitist pro that everyone in the room, their heads turn. And they just, I mean, he was bombarded the entire weekend by people wanting to talk to him. And that was Tularian Community College. Tularian Community College was bigger than Brian Kibler, was bigger than Louis Scott Vargas, was bigger than Reed Duke. I don't know if Reed Duke was even there. Was bigger than all of them. Tularian was the king of GP Vegas. And that was just amazing for me to see because I consider him a pretty good friend by now. We've, we, we talk a lot. 
uh, bounce. Uh, we have a lot of the same philosophies about um, YouTube community and, and whatnot. And it was just an amazing, amazing sight to see. We actually, he actually found me where I was sitting down uh, doing a crack a pack with Gathering Magic, and he sat down and we talked for a bit, and then we played a played a game, and then we were bombarded. We had a circle of people. I guess like I haven't seen any. Supposedly, some people were were tweeting pictures and whatnot about um, Rogue Deck Builder versus uh, the Professor and whatnot. So that is, I think that's a good step for the Magic the Gathering when Tolarian Community College can turn more heads because he's such a classy person and he isn't a pro by any means. And that just shows that we're, 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 we're having a lot less need for those, those really intolerable elitist pros. And, and that's good news for all of us. So anyway, that's just my two cents. Maybe, maybe I went off on a tangent here with, with what the whole purpose of this video was, but it just, it, Again, let me know in the comments how that how how you felt about the whole Goyf Gate. Well, and then now, now look. Oh yeah, by the way, the Tarmogoyf is in the tens of thousands of dollars now, isn't it? Or, or thousands of thousands of dollars. Is it past? I'll have to check again. I'm gonna check to see how much the Goyf is up to, but it's obscene. It's worth a, a ton of money, and people are picking it up for that very reason. It's memorabilia. A guy had a foil Goyf on camera with the stamp and chose to pick it over something that would have gone in his deck. So it's, it, it makes for a great story. It's memorabilia. I'm sure that the collector that is buying it is going to love it. And, it's, and, and it, maybe even it will go, out, go for more auction, even a, a higher auction in the future. Because, I mean, this is people collect things that, for that exact same um, reason. I mean, misprints are so big because of you know that. So, so yeah, it, it definitely was the right pick. Ha-ha on, on all those guys. And call them a sell it all you want. People can play Magic for whatever the hell reason they want to, not just to win a freaking GP or the or the the love of the game. How is that not the love of the game to pick a foil Tarmogoyf? I don't even understand that too. Please, one of you pros, how about how one of you pros uh, that never watches anything about Rogue Deck Builder, uh, comment on the section here and tell me what a noob I am and how I am a sellout and how I don't deserve to be in the Magic Spotlight or whatever else elitist attitudes you have. It's been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.